So yes, we are still here in the sandbox. Last time I talked to you guys, I was telling you how we were gonna transform that area into a bunch of different fountain features. And hopefully you enjoyed seeing all those different fountain features. It's kind of amazing to me how a single product like an aqua basin with just different toppers on it can so transform a space to its own. Now we're about to jump into doing the spillway bowls, which are these guys right here. So we're gonna set this up and this up. It's a little bit more complex than the other ones. All the other features we set up were just kind of standalone features. This one, especially this piece, needs some accent boulders put right around it. So we're gonna set all that up, keep that bib liner intact, and uh, show you one more. So the spillway bowls are coming together. Um, a big part of what I do, what Chris does, is the R&D side, the research and development side of Aquascape. And as we install this stuff, even though we've done it a hundred times in the past, or 99, like I don't want to exaggerate, but <laughs> we've done it a bunch in the past. Every time we put these things together, we come up with another idea. And one of the big things I want to take away from this one is the lighting inside the bowls. So you can see we've actually got four and a half watt and a two and a half watt in here and up in there. And the reason I did that is because I don't know which one looks better. I'm assuming the two and a half watt is enough, but with those fours, maybe it looks just that much better. The other thing we're playing around with is the necessity of this bib liner that went in down in here. So the purpose of a bib liner on the other projects, whether it was the stacked urn or the sphere or the basalt columns, was really to catch the splash. The purpose of the bib liner on this one is not so much to catch the splash. Everything's really confined to this bowl and this bowl, but there are some opportunities for water to kind of drip back down along the base of that one. There's an opportunity for leak in the plumbing, especially on that one. If it leaks in the plumbing in this one, who cares because it all goes back in? That one would have been outside the liner. So we really wanted to make sure the liner came all the way up and behind that bowl. If you guys want to see more tricks and tips, make sure you check out the Aquascape University. That's actually why we're putting this whole thing together is to update all of our footage. We've got videos on how to build a pond, how to build the pond list, how to install an aqua basin, but it's kind of outdated. Just check it out. The Aquascape University goes into great detail, shows you step by step on how we put every single one of these features together and the little pro tips that come with every single one. All right, we're going to have this thing running in probably about 30, 35 minutes, which works out perfect because I'm hungry and it's lunchtime. So we're all done, things look great. I think actually my favorite view is from here. I love that we tied this little dry stream bed into this gravel pathway. It just kind of makes it think like this wasn't an added feature. Everything was here for a purpose. We've got the bowls running. You can see how like sunken into the landscape. It just looks so much better. So I would really encourage you guys, if you're gonna do one of the aqua basin features, keep the soil from the excavated reservoir down there, the excavated aqua basin. Take it and flip it up to create a little bit of a berm. If that can look like it kind of comes out of a hillside, it looks so much better. Love the little waterfall. The sound of it's great. We've got one watt lights in there right now. We're gonna dim off these lights up in here and really see what it looks like with the one watts. And then I want your guys' opinion on uh, four and a half watts. Or there's two and a half watts in there now, and then we're gonna do four and a half. And we'll throw some different colors on there and you guys can see what they look like uh, at night. But pretty cool. This to me would be taking the spillway bowls really to their fullest potential with the addition of some lighting, the addition of you know about a ton of boulders mixed from 18 to 24 down to four to six inch. It just has a much better look. We've got some really simple plantings in a backyard. Obviously you wouldn't have this tropical plant stuff in here, but you might have pastas, you might have more ferns, you might have a still bee or something like that growing up in and around all this. But that green with some pop of color, leaving some areas for bulbs or maybe annuals a little bit later brings it all together. Hope you guys like it. Can't wait to show you what it looks like at night. So 
as promised, we've got the two and a half watt colored lights on there. We've got three at the base, which I love. You really need to play around with those and, and make it your own. Does it look better out further, shining back in? Do you like them up close? If you get them too close, you get these like really bright, what we call hot spots, like that one. <laughs> and then we have the two and a half watts inside. I'm gonna leave it here as we've got the color cycle kind of going all the way through. Right now, that's obviously the purple. There's more of that pink moving to red to orange and we're getting a little bit more yellow the yellow will move towards a green color there's my favorite right and there's there's always this area between the green and the blue that i really like and actually i'm not a huge fan of the purple but we had the purple on earlier and it looked pretty cool so the blue is going to move to the purple very cool so much different looking at night so what i'm looking forward to we've got these two and a half watts color changing lights on there the nice thing about the color change is they're actually dimmable. So if that was too bright, you could actually dim them down. You can dial in whatever color you want. I'm guessing when we put the four and a half watt lights on, what we're gonna see is a lot more of that light transferring over to the canopy of these trees back behind it. It might be too bright in here, but we'll find out. So there we are, you guys. There's the four and a half watts in there. Definitely a different look, but look at it. did exactly what I thought it was gonna do, is we're really gonna bring the landscape to life. And look at how the trees are now flickering. And that's happening because of the agitation on the surface of the bowl. As the light kind of penetrates through that water, then you get that flickering motion all over in here. We were just saying if those were white, if those were the white hyacinth over in here, how cool those would look in there as they change colors too. And so think about that with the landscape, like maybe these are a bunch of hydrangeas or something that's sitting here at those white flowers, really important. So you guys tell me what you like best. Do you like the brighter lights? Do you like the more subtle? To each their own. I think what's kind of cool is you can make it whatever you want. There was, a, was not my favorite. The red, not liking. <laughs> the green looks pretty cool. My favorite is this color right in here, this blue. It looks awesome against the evergreens. The purple is not bad either. And then don't forget, we are the only manufacturer of colored lights that still go back to white. So you can always just go back to white when you're not in uh, disco mode. So it's so funny, like I spent so much time talking about the two watt light versus the four watt light and which one do you like better. And now we just switched out the upper spillway bowl to the, to the spillway fire and water bowl. And I would have to say this, forget the lights, just go with the fire thing, because look at how awesome this is. so much more ambiance to the area with that fire sitting up there. It still gives us a little bit of the shimmer on the evergreens. In fact, maybe the evergreens aren't a good idea next to the fire. <laughs> Chris is kind of adjusting the lights to move some of those hot spots down in there. I love the way that turned out with that fire element. So a new product this year. Tell me what you think. Fire, two watt, four watt. Well, what a perfect way to spend a rainy day. In fact, let me go show you how miserable it is outside. I can tell you what the temperature is. It's about 40 degrees. It's supposed to be cleaning ponds, but when it's 40 degrees and raining and you hear the ice pelting your windshield, you say, ah, why don't we spend the day inside? <laughs> Super windy. You can see everything is kind of blowing around. Very gray. The rain has subsided for minutes here but just not fun so back inside these guys are actually working on taking all the decals off oh they saved the best one <laughs> this was our pond stars trailer kind of sad but years and years ago yes we did have our own show called the pond stars and uh, this is going too much of a trailer we don't even fill a quarter of that with our other stuff and with all the other trailers and trucks and stuff we have we're gonna sell this beauty and uh, get something a little smaller that fits out on the job site a little bit easier but let's go back over to the sandbox studio and I'll show you where we're at so far <laughs> <laughs> 